everybody. Welcome to the Automation Village this month. Uh, this month, I'm coming to you from the beautiful, if slightly chilly, uh, Halifax Public Gardens here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Now, this is uh, one of the oldest Victorian gardens in North America. And it warms my heart to say, uh, to know that uh, as you watch this, uh, the Automation Village team, including myself, right now are actually in Orlando, Florida, getting ready for VT Skata Fest, which uh, you may have heard us talk about a time or two. But right now, what I'm here to do is tell you about, uh, well, first introduce the next segment, but also tell you about the new format that we promised you last month. Uh, specifically, rather than uh, every month offering up one 30 minute chunk of, um, let's call it an, an automation buffet of all our different interviews and case studies and, uh, and, and industry news. Instead, what we're gonna do is uh, more in keeping with other content creators, uh, we're gonna roll out uh, something specific and singular uh, twice a month. So every second Thursday, look here on this channel, hit like and subscribe, and you'll be all ready to see all of the same stuff, um, interviews, case studies, uh, but you'll just see them one at a time so you can enjoy them in just the time it takes to eat your sandwich. So without any ado, uh, let's move on to our very first inaugural episode, which talks about Linux. Uh, we all heard about Linux, we all talk about Linux, and this specifically are things that you need to think about if you're going to adopt Linux in your uh, automation, industrial automation system. Over to you, Dan Naughton. Hi, this is Dan Naughton from Trihedral Engineering, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Linux, the operating system, uh, in particular how it applies to, to SCADA systems. Um, the reason we're talking about Linux is Linux comes up quite a bit in conversations when people are talking about security. Everybody is concerned about security and it's a pretty standard conversation when you hear people say things like, I heard Linux is more secure than Windows. Maybe we should be looking at Linux for our SCADA system because uh, security in our SCADA systems is extremely important. Um, so that's normally the context you might hear uh, Linux mentioned. Um, so part of what I'd like to talk to you about today is Linux in general, the Linux security model, how the two of them compare. Um, but for starters, when you're looking at an operating system, at least on the, the top level, um, if you take an operating system and the major ones, of course, would be Linux, would be Windows um, and Mac OS, and they are configured according to best practices. Um, you know, they're, they're firewalled. Um, you use all of the correct authentication procedures. Uh, any of the, the applications that are running on them are configured according to best practices all of those operating systems are secure. Um, so with that in mind, when you deploy an operating system at a town, uh, one of the things that you need to consider are the skill sets of the people that would be maintaining that operating system um, over time. And by and large, when you look at municipalities and cities, um, their IT support staff are predominantly Windows support staff. Um, 99 percent plus of uh, support Windows desktops and Windows servers. Um, so when you're looking at skill sets, uh, that's an important thing to consider. Do you have actually Linux expertise um, either uh, on contract or on staff that would be able to support these systems? Um, because simply deploying um, a server that runs Linux, uh, if you don't know how to support and service it, uh, it might as well be a black box, um, which is never a good way to deploy anything. Um, and uh, Usually the only reasons you would do that is whoever provided that box would then just simply have a lock on, on your town or your factory uh, for a support contract because there's nobody internal who'd be able to maintain it. And maintenance is extremely important with these systems. When you start discussing Linux, one thing that would be important to consider is which Linux. Uh, Linux, unlike Windows, uh, normally comes in a form of what's called a distribution. And at any time, there's probably 30 or so distributions that you might find available on the internet. New ones are formed every month, it seems, and other ones are discontinued. Um, when you're evaluating a distribution, one of the things that you should consider is a distribution that is supported, meaning there's actually a company behind it where you can get a support contract, where if you run into issues with that, um, with anything that has to do with the, the software that runs on that distribution, you'd be able to get some support. So in the United States, the two biggest ones that you're gonna find are Red Hat Enterprise Linux, called RHEL for short, 
and Ubuntu. And those are the two biggest ones that you could find on the internet where you'd be able to, to buy a support contract. The, um, the support contract costs for Red Hat Enterprise Linux are roughly $800 per server per year. Um, and Ubuntu, at last I checked, was about $1,500 per server per year. Um, so that would be an important consideration when you're looking at uh, Linux, which distribution to find a supported one. A couple other things worth mentioning. Um, there are distributions out there that are called whatever the name is with an LTS at the end of it for long-term support. It's worth noting that that support means simply that that's just, that distribution has not been abandoned. It doesn't mean that there's actually somebody you could call in case you have problems. Um, if you do need support, it would be like many things on the internet where there may be a, a news forum or something, which if you're running a town and you're in a crisis, that's, that's really not the best plan. Um, one note, there was one operating system that was based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which was called CentOS, uh, which many people used for years um, because it essentially ran the same software as Red Hat Enterprise Linux, so it was arguably supported, um, but that one has been since discontinued. Um, and the replacement one from Red Hat, which is CentOS Stream, um, is the exact opposite. It's, it's pre-released beta software, which is not something you'd be interested in running um, running your SCADA system on. So in short, if you're looking for a Linux, it's important to ask which Linux and probably the two ones you'd want to consider are Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, for $800 a year for the support contract or Ubuntu for $1,500. Um, those would be the two recommendations I would have if you're looking at a sort of which Linux should I use. The next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the basic Linux security model. We started discussing Linux in the first place because of security, so it's probably worth going through the model at least on a, at a high level. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is one of the Linux features called Security Enhanced Linux, or SE Linux for short. Um, it's a kernel module and it's normally set uh, or implemented rather by all of the major distributions. Um, SE Linux typically will run in, in one of three modes. One of them is enforcing, uh, which is usually the default. Um, the other ones are permissive, which is essentially just warnings, and the third one is disabled. Um, so if your software application isn't installed or set up correctly, you could run into problems with the, uh, the default uh, SE Linux policies of the distribution. So um, often people recommend just simply disabling it. Don't disable it. It's worthwhile going through all of the policies for that application to make sure that they're installed correctly and that they run correctly or you'll be bypassing one of the primary security features of Linux. The next part of the Linux security model is Linux uh, file capabilities and permissions. Um, these are very analogous in Windows and Mac OS where each file has its own uh, read and write capabilities and executable uh, privileges. Um, those are, are uh, pretty straightforward. The only thing that's worth really noting is uh, on Linux, a process cannot open up a port or listen on a port under port 1024 unless it's explicitly given permissions or it's running as administrator or root, which is never advisable. Um, so part of the Linux um, file system and capabilities that you need to explicitly go in and allow an executable to open up a port below 1024. Um, that's extremely important. Uh, one of the takeaways is when you run an application um, to make sure that it has those permissions set. Um, so a question worth asking is your SCADA process, is it running with all the permissions set correctly or is it just simply running as root or administrator? Um, in general, all processes should not be running as administrator. Uh, you should go through each one of the permissions it needs and specifically allocate it to that application. Uh, running it as administrator defeats a, a half of the security model. Um, so if you're discussing how the process runs, the question to ask is, is this process running as root? And if the answer is no, then somebody's cut some corners on your security model. The next thing worth discussing is part of the single sign-on uh, recommendations uh, from both DHS and from the AWWA. Uh, when you start talking about um, single sign-on, single sign-off, um, Active Directory Server um, or services rather in Microsoft Windows is really the preferred way uh, for most towns and factories um, to accomplish this. So when you're discussing your Linux distribution, 
it's worth going through the exercise of how do I do the integration between Linux into an Active Directory server for authentication. Um, some people who do this all the time, it's not, it's not terrible, um, but it's uh, by no means trivial. So it's worth mentioning. Um, how do you plan on integrating this Linux distribution into the current Active Directory infrastructure at the town? The last thing I wanted to discuss as far as the Linux security model is firewalling. Linux uses either IP tables or NF tables as a way to do network packet filtering. Uh, Firewall D is the, the front end to set up all the various rules. Um, just a, a security reminder, the firewall should remain up. Uh, when it comes to SCADA systems, which do an awful lot of network listening um, and polling, uh, firewalls are a constant source of headache. Uh, so whoever's managing your Linux um, distribution, it, it's important for them to know the ins and outs of that firewall D utility um, to make sure that all the correct ports are open. Um, so do not disable the firewall. That's usually the first approach when people run into uh, troubleshooting issues um, and just know how to use the, uh, the configuration utilities and how to do the debugging. The last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, was Java, which is not exactly Linux, um, but in the world of SCADA, uh, Java and Linux is a pretty popular combination. So some of the things that you would question when you're talking about Linux, it's probably worth having similar discussions when you discuss Java, uh, particularly when it comes to support. Um, Java has been around for a long time. Um, a lot of people use it. Uh, in the United States, there seem to be two uh, popular support uh, organization rather that that will support Java and that would be Oracle and Azul um, both of them offer up a supported Java and then there's a number of uh, free Java's that you can find on the internet um, so if you're considering Java it would be uh, it would be worthwhile to ask the same questions as to which Java which Java is included in my application um, when you're talking about the two Java's that are supported um, the Oracle one uh, is $25 per month per core. Um, so an average 10 core processor would be roughly $3,000 a year for support from Oracle. Um, and the Azul platform core Java is roughly five grand a year um, for support. Um, so when you're discussing which Java gets uh, bundled with your application or which one is your application using, um, that would be worthwhile to know which one or was it, uh, was it bundled with the freeware one. Um, You'd want to know that because Java is one of those things that there's, it's constantly being updated um, and it would be worthwhile, like anything, to keep your, your software on your SCADA system current. Um, so having support for your Java is equally as important as having it for the operating system underneath. So a quick recap. Uh, when it comes to Linux, uh, some of the things to remember um, that any one of the major operating systems can be secure. You want your operating system properly maintained, patched, and updated uh, behind a firewall with the software firewall enabled. And when it comes to Linux, you want to make sure that SE Linux is set to enforcing, um, that you have all of your file systems and permissions set correctly. Do not run any processes as root. Uh, make sure that it's connected to an Active Directory server and that the firewall is enabled and that you know how to debug it and add new rules. And when it comes to Java, make sure that you're using one of the supported versions of Java and not the freeware words, the freeware ones rather. And those would be the ones from Oracle and Azul would be good starting points. And good luck with your SCADA system. Thanks, Dan. Well, once again, uh, we have a new format, which means twice every month, uh, we are gonna bring you more good industrial automation goodness like that. Uh, so make sure you hit like and subscribe and uh, that little bell, and we'll make sure we let you know when the next one is coming. So thanks again from all of us on the Automation Village team, Natasha, Keith, Dave, and myself. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.